Let's talk about Justin Fields. Why does everyone think the second best quarterback in the draft is going to wind up being the fifth one taken? Skoski who knocks him down. Two yards short and Fields is still down. I've been doubted many times. Uh, I have no trouble going through hard times. This is what I'm hearing from around the league. They're saying that he's the last guy in and he's the first guy to leave. This brother dropped to arguably the fifth best quarterback. They had no chance. And the real question you hear from people is, does he have the work ethic? Can't get a straight answer. Does Justin Fields have what it takes to be a great quarterback? so-called experts, but I don't know where they get their expertise from. Narratives and the rumors and innuendo surrounding the NFL drafts, they can be smoke screens. Justin Fields falls, let's say. Uh, Justin Fields. Justin Fields. Justin Fields. Justin Fields. With the 11th pick, my Chicago Bears select Justin Fields, quarterback of Ohio State. I'm not going to take it personal. I'm going to just make those teams regret not choosing me. I know for a fact there's not 10 players better than me in the country. Make them pay for it. I'm Justin Fields. I go to Harrison High School in Kennesaw, Georgia. I would describe Kennesaw as a, you know, kind of a small town, uh, you know, in the suburb of Atlanta. Right here is a mural in uh, downtown Kennesaw. It's definitely cool having this mural just to have, you know, when kids walk by or drive by and see it and, you know, they say, I want to be like that kid one day. It's a great town, great community, and, you know, it's home for me. There goes my dad right there driving by. I like Lever to Beaver Town. It's just a small town, especially in the sports world. Everybody knows each other. A lot of people know who you are. A lot of people know each other. That was one of the draws to moving to that side of town. You know, um, my husband really wanted the kids to be able to have that experience. And so you, you know, got it where the whole town would come out at football games. It was like a, a family outing, really, for us. Pretty much where it all started. Right over there, we were playing East Paulding. I was going crazy that game. The kid would watch like Mike, no lie. 12 times a day. You thought it was Michael Jordan. Harrison, it's definitely been a great, you know, school to me and, you know, the community uh, of Kennesaw has just been awesome with the uh, support. So definitely for, you know, grateful for all the relationships that I built there. And pulling up to the school, just got here. Get some throwing in with old high school teammate, Darius Clark. My man's just won a national championship at Lindsey Wilson College. Good. Where are you living? Uh, I'm here right now, but I'm, I'm up in Chicago. I bought a house up there. My house? Yeah. Well, I sat on the field, comes with a fat mustache. That mustache you got right here. It was the same size as seventh grade. My whole family is athletic. You know, it's always been sports as our like main activity where other people maybe might do music or art. It's just that's what we've enjoyed most. So that's what we've done our entire lives. I went to a gym once, and the cheerleading coach was there, and there's a bunch of parents around, and, uh, and I had my daughter with me, and the cheerleading coach asked, uh, hey, you want to sign your daughter up for cheerleading? And I was like, uh, no, my daughters play sports. The gym got quiet, and I, I'll never make that mistake again. It's just kind of a way of life for them. They grew up competing every day at home with their siblings. You're not a basketball player, this is a basketball court. And I'm gonna start heating up. I always challenged him when he was young. I play classical music in the crib, you know, and even before he was born, because I say that that expands the brain and renews parts of the brain that you typically wouldn't use. So I'll take some credit for that. <laughs> 
I'm LeBron James and Steph Curry. Big together in one. I really need a man's ball. That's why my shot's not going in. Obviously, he's very competitive. Restarted because I won that one. Chris, I, I hit it the first ball. time. We'll see if I can do it again. Automatic. Bingo. Come on, now stop playing with me. Stop playing with me, man. <laughs> Bro, you can't count. You need to go back to school, my boy. I'm not gonna lie, like, I was more the tougher one and he was the crybaby if he had lost a game or something like that. Every time he got hit, he cried. She beat me 2-1, but you already know as a big brother, I have to let her win, mm. just to keep her confidence up. No, so, you should have heard him before. You know. He's talking all kinds of stuff. He was only three then. You know, we were doing the wiffle ball thing. One day, I walked over to the park and said, hey, you know, can my son play? Well, he was as big as these five and six-year-olds. Matter of fact, my girlfriend used to call him Little Debo. He wasn't fat, but he was a little meaty dude. And he was big, right? He got on his first baseball team at three and a half, and he was hitting it out to the fence. He would beat the other kids by like 10 yards. And I was like, these kids are non-athletic. I mean, what? I, I didn't realize he was uh, special. There you go. There you go. Yes, sir. Oh! Yes, sir. Look, there you man, go. bro. There you God go. on your side there today. You Justin being you know, a really good athlete, wanting to play quarterback. What do you love about the position of quarterback so much? I love the control, the competitiveness. I heard all the cliches, especially about the African-American quarterback. He's raw. He's a project. They can't read things of that nature. So if he was going to play that position, I wanted him to do it with excellence. I'm trying to get these guys right. I'm trying to. This is JV. JV. So that. I'm proud of you, man. Appreciate it. I met Justin at a, a football camp at Walton High School. He was roughly around in the sixth grade. A little stocky kid, real athletic, could throw really well, move well, but um, he was still raw. He was a raw athlete. And his dad went fraternity brothers on Mega Sci Fi. So that that made it easier for us to get along and start a um, relationship from there. You know, another trainer wouldn't have came to my house, picked my kid up, took him to train. He trusted me with his son, so we took it from there. Coach Ville, me and him have been working since the end of my sixth grade year. He's made me into a quarterback, especially a passer, because all I remember, you know, my sixth grade years running the ball, like literally not passing at all. In seventh grade, um, I, I started passing the ball way more, so he definitely got my fundamentals right and, you know, kind of got me on that right track to become a top quarterback. Him being transparent with Justin's ability or lack thereof or what he needed to work on really helped. Around about the same time, Trevor, I met him in the seventh grade at a camp I was doing at Lasseter High School. His dad and a guy by the name of Eddie Prince introduced me to each other, and they said, you need to get with this young man. There's always gonna be somebody saying that, you know, Trevor's better than me, and we, of course, grown up about 20, 30 minutes away from each other. And Them having each other, you know, so close, him being in Cartersville, them being able to push each other was definitely a great benefit for the both of them. Trevor's a great quarterback, you know, pushed me uh, to be better every time we worked out. You know, of course, you know, every throw that he threw. I think, you know, just that, you know, back and forth competition is going to make, you know, both of us better. And, you know, it, it did. And seeing him do his thing on the field, it, it pushes me to, you know, go, go harder and uh, be better. Trevor Lawrence was, was sort of the golden boy. He started as a freshman and won multiple state championships. Tall, strong-armed, prototypical quarterback. Trevor was out the box a little earlier because Trevor got to play in the ninth grade on the varsity. So I, that gave him a little bit more varsity experience. It isn't just about game day. It's everything they don't see. Early mornings, late at night, my grind is different. They'll hear my name on Sundays. Let's work. My sophomore year, I didn't really have any uh, offers. We worked a ton on him not leaving the pocket early, but when you're that athletic and you have that kind of running ability, it's kind of hard to put that kid in that box and say, stay, stay, stay. So during the season, I would start off the game usually, and by the third or fourth drive of the game, I would get taken out just because I was struggling. That was a, of course, tough time for me. His sophomore year was when he was really growing into that growth spurt. 
where he like hit three and a half inches over the course of a summer. And then he was really kind of getting used to his new body, right? So his mechanics were kind of off. Being an athlete, you have to have complete control of your body. So when I kind of hit that growth spurt late, it was new to me. Tell me a little bit about your season last year as a junior. Uh, last year as a junior, I really kind of, I think that's where I grew more. Sophomore year wasn't the best year, but uh, last year I kind of, you know, developed more as a quarterback. All I can tell you is the first book that he ever read at three and a half. I got at the Kroger, I'll never forget. It was at the checkout stand. The name of it was God Made Me Special. I guess he took that and ran with it, right? <laughs> Eventually, I got the hang of things. Going to those Friday night games and, you know, wearing that number one on my cheek, you know, how girls would paint their face. It was so exciting. I remember him being the best. Over the years, he's learning that when things broke, he was able to make plays. Anderson dies, can't make the tackle, fields, walks into the end zone on the near and his legs was able to make home run hits because he can go get 60, 70 yards easily. I've had the opportunity to help many of the best quarterbacks in the world become a little bit better. Justin's strongest skill set at that age was just his ability to manipulate the football. There's not many kids who could throw the football with that much pace and energy um, at that young of an age, and that's something you can't really teach. I am as a person, just the even killed. I, I really don't get too excited. I just try to stay uh, neutral and um, just kind of, I guess, just just be who I am and be within myself. I'm gonna start over because I, I feel like I need more energy. The first ranking is released prior to a class's sophomore season. Within that process is the fact-finding mission, height, weight, speed, you're trying to talk to coaches, you're trying to see guys compete in whatever settings you can. I was committed to Penn State my sophomore year. I committed there after I got, you know, some SEC offers. I knew that I most likely wasn't going to go to Penn State, so I just decommitted from them. And then, of course, I kind of went through that recruiting process again. For a quarterback, it's such a complex position. You know, if you're accurate in high school, you're gonna be accurate in college. You should dominate the competition in high school, no matter what classification you play in. And when you're the best player on the field, at the most important position on the field, we should know it. Trevor Lawrence was our number one guy from the beginning. The Justin Fields phenomena took shape a little bit later. As his junior season progresses, you're seeing him start to really put on tape what, what it's supposed to look like. He just sort of knocked the door down of the rankings process. 24 of the top high school quarterbacks in the nation will arrive in Los Angeles to compete for a spot in the Elite 11. Elite 11 is the most prestigious uh, high school quarterback camp in all of the country. We get together between 20 and 24 of the best high school quarterbacks in the country, and we drill that down to 11. I mean, and from that 11, there's one MVP who is selected from that group. This is the most talented group we've ever had. You're the biggest, you're the fastest, you're the strongest. You go through a series of tests to find out who would be the top quarterback in their country. So Trevor and Justin battled for that as well. Everybody pretty much had Trevor winning it going number one. And of course, I mean, he was a number one recruit at the time. What do you think it is that is going to help you separate from the rest of the pack at the Elite 11 Finals? I would just say how much, uh, how much I work, how hard I work. I was treating like a, a huge deal. My goal there was just to win. It wasn't to you know go and make friends. It wasn't to enjoy the experience. It was just to get better. And I wasn't focused on 
necessarily talking and getting to know the other quarterbacks. I could have really cared less, to be honest with you. I remember a conversation I had with him in his room, and he was studying the playbook that they had sent him. I was like, man, that's good. It's a good job making it. You know, don't put too much pressure on yourself in this. He says, you don't understand. I'm going to win this. He is so laser focused. It's like there's something in him that I've never seen before. Son, it's OK. You, you, you made it. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. And he kind of snapped at me. I'm going to win this. You, you don't know how hard I compete. I just remember telling his dad, I was like, you just don't understand what's happening right now. He's not going home without winning this whole thing. I feel like I'm one of the hardest workers that you'll ever meet. When you get around him and you see him in his element, you quickly become aware that he is the alpha. Out the gate, sir. He is there to stake claim to whatever it is he wants. He was determined to dispel the Trevor's better than me narrative. That was his goal, and it was just like a man possessed. The scene is a two-man race. It's between you two. When it comes to MVP, you guys both made it very clear you guys wanted to win it. You've separated yourself. It's not just how you play. It's how you handle the up and downs. It's how you handle your team. It's how you handle the bigness of this. Good luck. All right, have a great one. Good luck, Justin was 17 at the time he was displaying this level of leadership. Right, and that's so uncommon to be not only comfortable enough to get guys to do things, but be comfortable in your own skin. You see guys come in and you look and like, all right, who really wants to win this? And then that was Justin. Go, 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 go. And then you're like, okay, who's really talented? And you're like, Justin's the most talented one. I think he has that gift. The, the offense under Justin Fields at quarterback scored on 71% of the times he had the ball. It, it sounds impressive, but when you contrast it to what the rest of the group was, again, these are the best quarterbacks in the country. On average, the rest of the group scored on 29% of their drives. I mean, this was just a guy that had total and complete control over that event. And for him to go out there and, and look that much better than everyone else in the country, it, it was remarkable. He was able to show his full range of talents there. His intelligence, his ability to pick up a playbook, his accuracy, his throwing to different receivers on time and anticipation. We got a bunch of big personalities. We got the best skill position players there, and they're coming out and, and catching passes for him. And they, like, rallied around Justin, his energy, his presence, um, his charisma. Getting to meet, you know, future NFL stars. It's like, uh, one team is a little overmatched, and, you know, they, this quarterback is throwing dimes. Learning from, you know, past quarterbacks that have been in the same shoes that, that I was in and just learning their stories and, you know, learning from their mistakes. I mean, I've been to just about every Elite 11 for the last 15 years. Jameis Winston and Deshaun Watson and Tua Tungavailoa. Justin Fields was above them all. Congratulations, buddy. We've got a smash concept this play. Cut. Drive back in the pocket, stay patient, eyes down the field, he breaks free. Complete the ball, touchdown. That's how we do it. Coming into today, what were your goals? You know, my goals were, of course, getting the MVP and making it to LA. It's always been a dream of mine. He literally left Elite 11, and every school in the country wanted him at the conclusion of that week. I think it kind of just shocked everyone. It, it just became clear that this was a guy that was going to be the story in recruiting. Looks like my dream has come true. That kind of created almost a meteoric rise in the way people looked at him in terms of his quarterback talent and, and the effect that he would have on a college program. Thank God the mail wasn't coming to my house. It was coming to his dad's house, right where they were flooded. We got so much mail. If we went a couple days without checking the mailbox, it would just be stuffed. Sometimes the mailman would, you know, 
come up to the front door and just bring us stuff because we had so much. That's the kind of year I blew up. I was just getting offers from like SEC schools, like Alabama, Auburn, Georgia. Being a kid from Georgia, I was too caught up in like, how would people look at you if you went to Georgia? Like you would be a, a god. All right, Justin, why Georgia? His sister had already committed there, so there were a lot of things pulling him there, along with the fact that, you know, it's SEC, you know, the most competitive conference in football. I definitely never saw myself being in this position where I am right now. So all those things, all those boxes were being checked off, right? I pretty much decided that I wanted to stay closer to home, closer to my family. The school was awesome. I liked all the uh, other recruits in my class, so I was trying to, you know, of course, recruit the best players in the country to come to Georgia. I'm already hitting guys up, telling them to come and join me because I want the best players to play with me. This is a guy that can play as a freshman. This is a guy that can help you as a freshman. And in fact, if you get him on the field as a freshman, you're probably going to end up winning a national championship somewhere along the way. I have to say to the Georgia fans is that uh, the future is going to be crazy, so hold on to your seats. That made it all the more shocking when he went and decided, you know what, I'm going to go try to win a job and beat Jake Fromm out. At that stage, Jake Fromm was going to be a really hard guy to beat out. Um, the guy wasn't blinking. They said, okay, you know that's going to be a tough battle, but you like competition. He's like, I'm, I'm going to compete for the position, and, and that's what you go to school for. He said, I don't want them to give me anything. Justin, what separates you from the rest of the quarterbacks at Georgia now? Uh, I mean, uh, it's pretty obvious. I just feel like I, I bring another uh, aspect to the game with my legs. Now it's Fields, touchdown dogs. Justin's decision to go to Georgia confused me a little bit, right? I, I didn't understand it at first, but then when you talk to him, you understood it was his, his competitive nature. I'm not afraid of a challenge, and uh, I know at the end of the day, it's just gonna make me a better player. He saw a job that he felt like he could and should win. Fields takes the hit, throws the touchdown. I just remember in the living room at his dad's house when the staff came. I asked Kirby one question. I said, name one coach that has ever replaced a starting quarterback who's got a winning record, just one. Because you're telling me and, and everybody that he's going to get a fair chance. So just name one that where that scenario happened, because in my mind, I don't believe that's gonna happen. That was my one question and he couldn't answer it. Coach Smart, I mean, he hasn't promised me any playing time. The only thing he's promised me is he's gonna play the best player. That, I mean, that's really the only promise. Uh, I want. And it's a fake. Justin Fields. Oh my gosh. It was fourth and 11. They had no chance. Justin Fields is a more talented player than Jake Fromm, but I, I understand the, the predicament that Kirby Smart was in because it, it, it's hard to pull the plug on a guy that's been as, as rock steady as Jake Fromm was. His first year for me, it was, was pretty stressful. You know, you hear the best will play, you'll get a fair shot. I knew he could compete on that level, so I just wanted him to uh, play much like I was looking at the Clemson games. So we kind of, you know, would look at that and, you know, wanted the same thing. Don't think it was ideal for me in terms of, you know, playing time and some things that happen at the school. For you can count on begins with an incident unfolding at the University of Georgia involving a former local baseball star. A former Greenbrier High School baseball player is being accused of shouting racial slurs at a football game after a student posts her concerns on Facebook. University of Georgia is investigating that story now. Trying to build a program on tolerance and mutual respect. And you can't control what other people say, but you know, the expectation is that people are part of our program 
attending our games to share the same beliefs that we do. Sad that, that, that something like this would happen. You handled it the right way. You handled it professionally, and the school took action against the person who did it. Just going through that, it, it definitely helped me as a person and um, as a football player for sure. Georgia was a testament to his maturity. You got to think about how tough that is for somebody going through that situation. I'll get the Justin Fields question out of the day. Has he informed you guys he intends to transfer? I think he's looking at his options. There were a lot of question marks, and you know, of course, I wasn't getting uh, the amount of playing time that I thought I would. I think he just wanted to be somewhere where he felt comfortable. That would give him the best opportunity to mature as a man and mature as a football player, and he found that. So that's why I pretty much decided to uh, look for new schools. Justin Fields. Is a I'm Justin Fields. When you go through something, unmerited adversity, it makes you stronger. I'm tired of thinking about the future. This is toxic. Trevor was out the box a little early. If I get on this bench press and I just keep going at my muscles and they're tired and they're fatigued, a couple days later, they're going to be strong. I got to go. I love the control, the competitiveness. All right, Justin, why Georgia? Adversity, it, it helps you grow. It's always been a dream of mine. They had no chance. Three. Two, zero. I'm not afraid of a challenge. I know at the end of the day, it's just going to make me a better player. There's something in him that I've never seen before. There's been too much talking lately. We played the Sugar Bowl, we played Texas. I think it was New Year's Eve. Justin Fields, number right. one prospect out of high school last year in the country, backup quarterback, freshman from Kennesaw, Georgia. Lots of rumors in the lead up to this game that he is transferring. You saw him go through what he went through at Georgia and not get the opportunity to play, and you're like, man, I thought this guy was supposed to do this. And Texas will win the All-State Sugar Bowl. We lost that game, and literally I went back to Georgia two days later, packed up all my stuff. Georgia quarterback Justin Fields expected to transfer to Ohio State. I mean, I think the toughest part was leaving his friends and teammates behind. He recruited half that class. The day we moved Jaden into her dorm room at UGA, we also moved Justin out. His building was right here, and then my building was right here. She was literally getting there right when I was leaving. And um, you know, my parents, of course, wanted us to be at the same school at the same time, but it ended up not working out that way. We drove the truck up there. And everything is being taken out of the truck and put in my room, and then everything is taken out of his room and put in the truck. So it was just like a, it was like a weird moment. And that same night, we left to drive to Ohio. And obviously, this is a huge get for Ryan Day. A lot of people thought he's the best quarterback prospect to come out of high school in the last five years. Me coming from Georgia, you know, growing up where it's sunny, hot, the sun's always out. Being in Ohio in the winter, it was definitely different for me. Boy, you look cold tonight, Rob. Colleen saying it's cold would be an understatement at the moment. I think in the first month I was there, the sun was out maybe three days in that, in that first month. And of course, it's about 30 degrees there, so it was just a different environment for me, and I just wasn't used to it. I promise you, I dropped him off on Saturday, and he called me on Monday. Dad, this isn't for me. Uh, I, you know, I'm ready to come home. Can you come and get me? I was kind of by myself a lot. You know, I called my dad and was like, um, I don't know if I can, you know, do this. Me being new there, you know, everybody 
having their own kind of cliques, their own, you know, people that they hang out with. It was definitely different for me. That different environment kind of just gave me a shock and I, I didn't expect it to, to happen. So I definitely uh, called my dad up one day and was like, Dad, I, I think I want to go back. Get out with no pain. See the rain coming down. I said, well, let's pray about this, son. Let's let's give it a little while longer. They were too busy about the build up, and I feel like I don't want to feel it. You know, he just told me to stick through it and, and pray and just fight through the, you know, first two weeks. And he said, if you know, I felt the same way a week or two from now, then we would think about it. I know it won't solve my problem, but I know it makes a difference. Literally, the, the next day after we had that conversation, I think some of the guys on the team we we played basketball, and I just felt, you know, finally a part of. You know, the team, <laughs> me just interacting with, you know, my, my new teammates and me kind of building uh, those relationships with them definitely uh, helped me a lot and, you know, feel more at home at Ohio State. Even as good as Trevor Lawrence is, and he's had a really great freshman year in plant, you know, it's got Clemson to the national title game. Oh, most people I talked to in, in the coaches thought Justin Fields was an even better prospect than Trevor Lawrence. You know, Justin Fields needed a place that could just get him on the field, get him reps. With me, the more reps I get, the more confident I get. Hut. It's that simple, just the, the more times I'm throwing routes to a certain receiver, the, the more comfortable I get. Justin's decision in Ohio State made nothing but a ton of sense to me. Like, he really had a good understanding of what the culture was, what the situation was in the quarterback room. There's a lot of old heads. Anytime a quarterback gets in the transfer portal, they're gonna be like, well, this is, this is the new age where guys are just, you know, if they don't win the job, they quit and they run. I think what Justin Fields indicated was exactly the opposite of that. The talent is going to find its way to opportunity now. When you go through something, unmerited adversity, it makes you stronger. If I get on this bench press and I just keep going at my muscles and they're tired and they're fatigued. A couple days later, they're gonna be stronger. I thought it was really an empowering moment for college football. You know, God had a plan for him going to Ohio State. We saw him in high school. We saw him at Elite 11 dominate. Just took a shower, just brushed the teeth. About to hop in the bed, watch some film. Wake up tomorrow, around 7 o'clock, 6.45. It's time to play. Just so much anxiety, you know, your butterflies in your stomach. Like, I was so excited for him. Please! It's a good day today. And we gonna go tomorrow and get a duck? What? Good night. What do you want? We always go back to that first touchdown. And it's got the field up the count. Watch out. It's just like a piano we just kind of threw off our back. And you say, hey, let's go, let him be him, because I knew he could do it. It was just crazy, you know, being in the shoe. 100,000 people, they're screaming, the band's going crazy. The atmosphere is unbelievable. Just gives you goosebumps. Justin Fields, hello to Lombard's 51 yards. Fields with a big hole and 
then you see that explosiveness. It was just a matter of getting a chance and getting a shot to do that. He had his opportunity to show all his skill set at this school where he had tremendous support for his running backs, receivers, offensive line, defense. He was able to do that. It ended up being the right place for him. I don't think I could have ended up in a better place. I think it was just like a coming out party for him. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Jeremy Ruckert, the motion man. Fields keeps it. Touchdown, Ohio State. Watching Justin play at Ohio State was just a sense of relief, right? Because it was a confirmation of all the things that you thought going through all this. It was exciting to see him injected into an offense that understood how to utilize him, that was, um, that was gonna build around his strengths. He saw it all. Justin Fields, two passing touchdowns and a rushing touchdown. I think Coach Day did a great job with developing me and making my job easy, especially my sophomore year being a first year starter. I had a lot of talented players around me, and of course our defense was very good. I think that kind of, you know, helped me uh, gain confidence. It isn't just about game day. It's everything they don't see. Early mornings, late at night, my grind is different. They'll hear my name on Sundays. Let's work. Just seeing it finally pay off on a big stage with huge crowds was just awesome. It gave me goosebumps. Just made my heart very happy. So I was just very excited for him. And I just know how hard he's worked. You saw the way that body type could impact a game by shrugging off and powering through defenders. You saw the elite arm talent. The accuracy was there. All of a sudden, the guy's practically perfect. Two of the best quarterbacks in America will face off here Saturday night in the Fiesta Bowl, talking about Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence. Lawrence, of course, has been there, done that. Fields has waited with this opportunity. The hard part about those games, you know somebody got to lose. Fields again, looking to throw. Wins the ball up. Leaping catch by Garrett Wilson. Lawrence in a foot race. Will they catch him? Touchdown, Tigers! Wow! I feel like he's worked for everything he's got. Obviously, he's a great player. Fields again. Tries to make the defense. Throws in the touchdown. You know, he's, he's always been a highly recruited guy. Lawrence, the run. Dumps it over the middle. ETN in space. ETN, 10, rings. Touchdown, Tigers. Fields will try to outpoint Lawrence and get Ohio State to a victory in the Fiesta Bowl. Got to call that timeout with 43 seconds left. Second down, Fields. Scans downfield. Final to the end zone. It's intercepted. Picked off by Lawrence. And the Tigers are not going to be dethroned tonight. They'll punch their ticket to New Orleans. I'm tired of thinking about the future. The future is just toxic, right? Yeah, what's up with it? Do it because I love it and I stuck. Let me show you where it is. This is. I don't know if it's gonna go that far. Please, none of the talks. I heard enough of it. Like, where you at? Who you with? You're a little kid. Like, you wanted to win. You weren't worried about how many yards you have, how many pleas you have. Touchdowns you had. If you scored one touchdown, you was happy. But like, that's how you gotta get back to. So worry about how many touchdowns they got. Is my completion percentage. How would you best describe your performance? I'm not looking at numbers, not looking at that, just, just the win column, so. Like right, how many picks I got in and all that. Good play and uh, make plays.
Buckeyes and Tigers familiar by now. They meet for the third time in the semifinals in the last five years. Well, we had gone to the year before, you know, playing Clemson in the Fiesta Bowl in 2019 and losing 29 and 23 to them. Just seeing, you know, how everybody was in the locker room after that loss. And, um, you know, Coach Day told us that, you know, remember this feeling. Remember that you never want to feel like this again. From when they walked off that field last year in Glendale, they've been waiting for another opportunity to go up against Dabo Sweeney and the Tigers. And that was so exciting. I just was like, oh my gosh, like this is really going to happen. The game is a playoff game, so I was trying to do everything I could to get the first down. Up top down, third and 13. Fields does have time and now takes off. I spent on that play and, you know, he ended up guessing right and just smacking me. Makes it. Yeah. My heart is pounding. You can see his head bounce, his body bounce. Man, 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 he's done. I think I did cry a little bit, honestly. I don't even know what to describe it. I guess you can describe it as like Thor maybe throwing a bowling ball right at your ribs or something like that. I've told him time and time again, don't spin. Throw that spin move away. It's Fields, is he OK? Can he continue? Finally help to his feet. He got up and came right back. That's that's the most impressive part about it, you know? He fought through it. Now he's showing some toughness there. I, I, I bet he's not pain-free at the moment, but he's not gonna let that stop him. I tried to throw on the sideline, and every time I would throw, it would hurt in that area. I think the only thing that, you know, got me through that game uh, was just my teammates and, and, and my coaches. Guys try to stretch the seven-point lead. Fields on the run, launches for the end zone. Delivered a strike. Uh, you, you talk about guts. Justin Fields showing that right now. Seeing Justin get hit like that, know that he was injured, know that it was hard for him to even breathe, and him continue to play at that level, I think showed everybody across the country not only is this guy super talented, but he's a competitor. Took a brief look downfield, then took a big hit from Phelan Spector again. And I think that everybody you talk to, when you hear them talk about Justin and how he competes, they know that he's not about losing. It was incredible. I, I couldn't believe um, how well he performed. From the pocket, a strike across the middle. You know, actually, I could believe it because that's Justin. Crispy, yeah, that boy Crispy had the tongue gleaming. Yeah, I know they can't miss me. See the boy in my way, my kicks is really heads in. Looking like that mean and then that boy's really spent. That is so Justin. He's not gonna let anything stop him. His legs are still working. He was gonna finish that game because he's too doggone stubborn not to. It was almost like he was in a different zone. You saw Justin Fields come to life, and you saw Trevor Lawrence evolve. Tigers are not used to losing games like this. It all beats all of our expectations, and it did. With those two guys, it really did. Of course, I always have respect for Trevor, not only as a player, but as a person. I hope it's just beginning. I hope there's more to come from those two guys. After, you know, the national championship game, I was just trying to help my body recover. I really wasn't paying attention to the mic drafts. You know, the pre-draft process is, is pretty funny. You know, you got teams that start to overthink things. That was some bull honestly. The way that Justin was covered, People said a lot of things about Justin when they didn't have the information. It's either a bias that you have to quarterbacks who look like Justin and play the way Justin does, or somebody who is going out of their way to try and cause Justin to slip in the draft and their guys to get moved up. So-called experts, I don't know where they get their expertise from. I probably paid attention to that a little bit too much.
didn't surprise me, it didn't shock me. Justin Fields is still developing. When you've been a five star and a number one candidate in the country since your junior year in high school, it's just really easy to try to nitpick. The most discouraging part is I was around him, watching him work, watching him get better. I know sometimes it's hard. You know, I, of course, have to stay on social media. Wrote this big thing out to tell somebody off on Twitter, and then I had to hit the delete button. Don't even give them the time of day. You have your moments where you see something crazy and you want to respond, but, you know, you just have to um, remind yourself, this is a battle I'll never win. But like me and him always talk, he said, man, Ron, it's just their opinion. And then that's what I always tell him, is people's opinion. And what can we do about it other than just keep working to get better and just prove that they are wrong. Got a smash concept this play. Cut. Draw back in the pocket, stay patient, eyes down the field, he breaks free. Complete the ball. Touchdown. That's how we do it. The NFL Draft is weeks away and features one of the best quarterback classes in years. His pro day, he came out locked in, focused. 32 and 4. We're built for this. Going through what he went through with Georgia, just running the ball and, you know, not being given an opportunity to pass very much. 74 and 6. We're built for it, you know, going to Ohio State and going through what he went through there. 227. 227. We were ready for it. He threw the ball really, really well. And I remember when he came home after that, we worked out. He said, Ron, I've done all I can do. It's just whatever they think about me, I can't change that. All Justin ever did was show up and work. Kept his mouth closed, said the right things when he had to, but he just showed up and worked every single day. And he was constantly questioned. And I, I don't, I honestly don't think that would happen if he wasn't a black quarterback. Because you are so American, I go out and tell you what's personal director told me that anybody who thinks Mac Jones should be drafted over Justin Fields needs his picture. Does it really matter to you? Hey, I mean, if, if, if they do that, then, then that's on them. I mean, I think I'm the, I'm the best quarterback in this draft, so um, if, if, if I get the quarterback drafted over me, then it's, it's up to look at that decision. And, you know, I just, just, just hope I can play that team, so that's what I'm just going to do today. Who's going to lose that? Who's going to lose the Clemson? They're going to see. I don't have to see anything. I always just keep it in the back of my head of who said it before, who, who said I can do this, who said I can do that. Like, it just stays noted in my head. Like, Justin Fields can't read defenses. I know that they'll be wrong. I mean, other people will bring it up. So all I gotta do is just do what I do. So on draft day, obviously, he was excited. You know, he, he's worked all his life uh, for this moment. It was cool being in the home that I've kind of grown up my whole life. You know, having, you know, my close family members there where so many conversations with my dad has happened uh, and, and a lot of things that have, have happened in my life so just being kind of home and you know having uh, another memory there was, was was definitely awesome it's always been a dream of mine we were excited but exhausted at the same time yeah um, I'm not gonna lie I felt kind of disrespected a little bit you know, I have four brothers and they're all texting me where do you think it's gonna go where do you think it's gonna go and I said the Bears hello Justin I need you. how you doing man Oh, what's up, coach? How you doing? 
Doing good. How about you? Are you ready to be a Chicago Bear? Let's do it. But when the Bears called, you know, I know a lot of people look at it like, hey, man, he didn't look excited. He didn't look happy. I think for him it was just, hey, you know, you know, this is just another chapter in my career. It wasn't, hey, I made it. With the 11th pick, my Chicago Bears select Justin Fields, quarterback of Ohio State. He was already starting to mentally prepare for, okay, when I get there, you know, how do I go about my business? You know, my mindset when I got drafted was, you know, it's, it's time to get to work. It's not, I, I made it. That kind of I made it mindset, you know, is, is kind of complacent and uh, I don't want to get complacent. There's been too much talking lately, so just show your work, that's it. I know that, you know, me being drafted to the Bears was just the beginning. You know, we were just glad it was over. All that was said in the press, it's like, you just want it to be over so they don't have Anything else to write about? I was like, wow, the Bears. I was a linebacker, so what linebacker's not a uh, Mike Singletary fan? You know, who doesn't like sweetness? And, you know, that 85 Bears team that won the Super Bowl. Are we bet? Let's bet 50 on-command push-ups. So wherever we are, no matter where we are, if I say, give me 10, you got to knock it out. If we're out at a restaurant, give me 10. It's been awesome, you know, just getting here after the draft. I didn't know Chicago was this nice, so I'm definitely happy I got drafted here. Nice meeting you. Have a good one. Thank you. Go Bears. Go Bears. The one I'll be driving has a, usually has like a little park thing. Yeah. Park. Automatic. I love golf, but I definitely got to work on my iron game a little bit. Ah! Mm. I've gotten a lot of, you know, practice in, in, in top golf, so I, I think my driving game is, is definitely pretty good. Mm. Should I try to get it? I gotta get better. Ah! That wasn't good. Mm. Uh-oh. When you're doing this, it's never good. <laughs> My iron game's not, not gonna cut it right now. I don't even know where it is. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is not about to turn the animal planet. Move on to the next one. I need this one. My man Sam has been talking crazy to everybody all day. So we finally gonna see what he got. Come on. Simeon, he's always known to talk trash. I'll bet you 50 push ups. Come down and talk to you. All right. My man Sam has been talking crazy all day. So we about to see what he's gonna do. You know, we had a couple of bets for push ups out on the golf course. He's been talking crazy. All right, come on. You're doing all this talking for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> that was horrible, man. Ah, ah. It's fun to do, um, especially when you have a, a close group of friends and you know you can just get out there and, and, and have fun. 10 push-ups right now. 10 push-ups. 20, 20. 20. 10 push-ups, 10 push-ups. 20, stop being a baby, bro. 20 push-ups, yeah. We had a few bets on there that, you know, I think we were betting on who could throw it closer to the putt and I ended up losing. See, that's how you get them. I've always been competitive from a young age, and that's that's kind of where that came from. Yeah. I'm interested to see how Justin impacts like the way we look at quarterbacks. I think that that's a guy that's been in big moments. He's played in big games. I love the control, the competitiveness. He'll always be a guy that is sort of seared in my brain as one of the most memorable prospects I've covered. Justin Fields is going to be like the model of quarterbacks moving forward. Big, strong, fast. You can make all the throws and process information. Like, if someone gave you all those characteristics, that's the guy you would want. This is a guy that has an opportunity to be one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL.
it's going to be fun to watch the ride. 